Good afternoon all. On the wall of my workshop I've got uh, these picture frames, uh, four of them, and inside each one is an electronics magazine. Now they're all everyday practical electronics, they all date from the mid-1990s. And uh, the reason they take pride of place on my wall is because these are the magazines that I wrote articles for. Now this one on the top is the EPE fruit machine. I'm pretty sure I've done a video on that, so I'll link to that uh, up in the top right. Uh, the next one down is the MIDI analyzer. I've not done a video on that, and mainly the reason is because I don't have my original prototype. Uh, there's a story there. And the one down here is the LED matrix message display. Now I'm pretty certain I've done a video on that one as well, so again I'll link to that uh, with a card. Now the three frames on the left contain the articles that I did jointly with my friend Brett, but the one I want to concentrate on today is this one on the right, the National Lottery Predictor, and this one I did on my own. So here's another copy of uh, this particular magazine, and uh, when you have a piece of work published you do tend to buy multiple copies. Now one thing I need to say about opening this magazine, if I hadn't obtained permission from the publishers, strictly speaking, I wouldn't be able to show the insides of this because although I wrote this article, I don't own it. But uh, I have obtained permission to show this article. Uh, so here it is. It's the National Lottery Predictor by me. Yes, I did use to spell my name differently back then. Uh, here's the circuit diagram, and of course it contains a PIC microcontroller. Now you can see from the uh, drawn image on the front cover, and also the photograph of the inside of the unit, that it contains just a single push button and a two-digit seven-segment LED display. There's the PIC microcontroller, so now this diagram will probably make more sense. Uh, the push button is here, there's the controller, and here are the two digits of the LED display. Now they're multiplexed, so you turn on each of the two digits with these two transistors, and then by putting a byte of data on the eight data lines, you can light up whichever segments you want. Now down here in this corner, there's a picture of someone in the editorial office of the magazine holding the National Lottery Predictor uh, like that. So I'm gonna try and recreate that now using the original prototype predictor. Yes. That's about it, isn't it? So in a moment, I'm going to do a teardown of this original prototype, but let's just have a quick look at the remainder of the article. Uh, software flowchart here, more photographs. This is uh, where to obtain your components. There's actually a little bit of um, PIC code there. Perhaps I'll show that in a bit more detail. Uh, PIC assembly language code. And then over the page, we have the circuit board. The circuit board uh, copper layout with the overlay of the components in place, some timing waveforms of the clock and some of the display drive signals, uh, drawings for the case and the cutouts and a drawing here for how everything is assembled in the case, a side on view. I mean, as you can see, it's, oh, is there another page? No, as you can see, it's a lot of work. This must have taken me about six months to do all this. Right, just before I do the teardown, let's just see if this still works. I haven't put batteries in this for, it must be 10 years. You switch on by pressing it and you get two dashes. Then you press the button and of course we're getting contact bounce now because it's so ancient and you get your lottery numbers. Please don't use these numbers to do next week's lottery because they're almost certainly not gonna work. Um, this is a real problem, this contact bounce. Now one of the things about this is it mustn't produce the same number twice, so it actually stores all the numbers that it's uh, created in a little memory area so that it doesn't produce them twice. And that means that if I keep pressing it, eventually it runs out of numbers and just shows two dots. That means that it's been through all the numbers. It didn't look like I'd pressed it 49 times, but I press and hold now to reset it. But because of the contact bounce on this switch, it very quickly goes through all 49. And there they are. So tearing these things down isn't going to be too complicated. It is 
after all just four screws and inside we have this uh, there's the LED the resistors for um, the segments 68 ohms I believe these are to limit the current there's the pick and there's the push button let me press and hold that and then we get numbers push button and a few additional components for I think clock reset and there is a, a sleep mechanism after two minutes of inactivity this thing will just turn itself off go to sleep and of course that saves the batteries so now let's undo these four nuts so that I can lift the PCB off the uh, bolts and have a look at the underside of it okay let's lift the board off its mountings because there is something rather unusual on the back it says bingo caller not national lottery predictor now the bingo caller uh, explanation is actually in the next issue the May 1995 issue and I'll do this in the words of Mike Kenwood uh, editor at the time funny isn't it how a piece of gadgetry can catch the imagination of readers sales of PCBs for the national lottery predictor have gone mad since last month's issue came out there is a story behind this project it was originally designed to illustrate our understanding pick microcontrollers article in the March issue that was written by Brett actually that article something we feel it does quite well and uh, then he says before the national lottery had got underway he that's me produced a bingo number generator not a project that would have had tremendous appeal but it served a useful educational purpose and it goes on a month or so before we were to publish the project the author asked if he could change it to a national lottery predictor we were of course delighted with this new more topical approach now the national lottery had only come out about six months uh, prior to the uh, publication of this article so it certainly was more topical it illustrates the versatility of microprocessors it was relatively easy to make the software changes that produced numbers from 1 to 49 for the lottery instead of 1 to 90 for bingo no hardware changes were necessary the predictor has already produced winning numbers for one member of staff fortunately for us only a small payout uh, Pam who is who was the company secretary back then won as I remember it 10 pounds so Pam will not be off around the world just yet now when you have an article published in a magazine you don't only buy the magazine you buy the copy afterwards just in case there's some editorial stuff you also buy the edition before because that has the next month section let's take a look at that so here it is next month national lottery predictor this high-tech piece of equipment comes with a cast iron guarantee that it will not in enhance your chances of winning oh well and uh, this issue's interesting also because it has a free PCB actually stuck to the front cover and it's still there after 20 years now here is the article understanding pick microcontrollers written by my mate Brett but what's interesting is the pick the drawings or the pictures of the pick microcontrollers they've got this very strange square bit of glass in the middle what's all that about well back in those days microcontrollers had no flash memory so the plastic types this one here called an OTP microcontroller one time programmable could only be programmed once and if you got it wrong well that microcontroller went in the bin now when you were developing code for the microcontroller you obviously wouldn't use one time programmables because you'd get through quite a lot of them you'd use a ceramic uh, chip with a little glass window in it now I know I've got one somewhere but can I find it no I can't but here's um, an EEPROM and this is ceramic chip with a glass window and you can actually see the chip inside let's just get in a little bit closer so there's the chip uh, the chip die actually inside the package now you can probably just make out the little connecting wires uh, which connect the external pins onto the little pads on the chip die and the uh, development pick was very similar to this it had this window now if you made a mistake in your PIC programming or if you wanted to add features or test features you'd have to erase the device and the only way to erase it 
was to put it in one of these EEPROM erasers. Inside here, there's an ultraviolet lamp. It's going to be a glass tube version because UV LEDs weren't out at that time. So you pop it into the UV eraser, shut the uh, drawer. You can hear there's a little micro switch in there. And when you switched it on, ultraviolet would erase the chip. And it would take between 10 and 20 minutes to erase. Now, although I can't find uh, a windowed pick, I have found this old photograph uh, when I sold my original PicStart uh, 16B system with the DOS floppy disks and the 9-pin D-type serial cable. This was all long before USB. Uh, well, maybe not long before it, but before it was common. But these are the windowed picks. Now, these 28-pin ones were the ones that had more I.O., but there's the little equivalent of the chip that's in the lottery predictor that actually probably was the 16C54 with its little glass or quartz glass window through which the ultraviolet would go and erase the chip. Now, as well as numerous different versions of the software, uh, erasing chips and programming new ones, you'd also go through different versions of the hardware. So here, for example, is a slightly earlier prototype with different shaped window which didn't quite work because I think it got very close to cutting off the uh, light from the LED so I made the window slightly larger and uh, here's just an empty case I bought several just in case I had to go through different iterations. Now there is actually another version of the National Lottery Predictor um, in Electronics the Maplin magazine uh, December 1997 is this the National Lottery Predictor. Now, because I don't have um, permission to show the inside of this magazine, I can't open it up, but I can go one better. Because here, hanging on my wall, just above my desk, is a Maplin Projects National Lottery Predictor Kit, LU61, uh, no longer available, I'm afraid, unopened, unbuilt kit. Let's have a look inside. So here it is, and uh, notice that it says based on an EPE magazine design. So what happens here is that Maplin got in touch with uh, Everyday Practical Electronics and said, can we run the same or a very similar article? And you can see here that uh, they included a printout of the article inside the box. Uh, there's me again, Julian Eilert. Um, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say. So let's take a little peek inside. Now they made it a lot smaller. Their box is uh, the next size down. Yes, you can see the uh, considerable size difference between their version and my original version. They also seem to have gone a slightly different colour. Uh, here's the printed circuit board that uh, Maplin made. Has it got anything written on it? Just National Lottery Predictor. Oh yes, it does say Maplin. Maplin GP018 Issue 1. And here are the components. Uh, there's the pick pre-programmed with the code for the National Lottery Predictor. It's a pick 16C54. There's the uh, double digit display and the various other components are in there. Now, as I remember it, I think that for every one of these sold, Maplin paid me 50p. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So there it is, that's the National Lottery Predictor, a 20 year old piece of microcontroller electronics and there's the magazine article that goes with it. Now, before I go, shall we do some National Lottery numbers? I mean, you know you won't win, don't you? 14 million to one against, but, uh, oh well, here goes. 33, six, 38, nine, 24 and 21. Now, if you win, don't forget who designed this. Cheerio.